Hello and welcome to another video. This time we're going to be looking at connecting a rotary encoder to our Agon's input output pins. The rotary encoder is connected to two of our input pins, one labelled CLK and one labelled DT. We also connect the plus 3.3 volts and the ground line. On the back of the Agon light you can see where the ground and the 3.3 volt lines are. The other two connections will be on PC0 and PC1. These are some of the same connections that we use when we looked at connecting joysticks. The way a rotary encoder works is that whenever you turn it, each of the two pins go high or low, slightly offset from each other. So here, for example, if we were turning clockwise, the CLK line goes low and then just a few moments later the DT line follows it. As we keep turning the CLK line goes high and then shortly afterwards the DT line does. And that continues while we keep turning. That gives us different values on the two I.O. pins. They may start at 1 and 1, followed by 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0 and back to 1, 1. And so that cycle continues over time. If we were turning the opposite direction, the sequence would be swapped over, and in which case DT would drop first, followed by the CLK line. If we look at our joystick test program, and we're looking at port C, we can see which pins are high. As I turn the rotary encoder, we can see that the two lower bits change, quite quickly. However, if I turn it really slowly, you can see that the order of the change is quite clear. Going clockwise, the lowest bit first swaps and then the next bit. If I turn the other way, the order is switched, so that bit 1 goes first, followed by bit 0. So this is what we saw in this diagram, with each pin going high or low, one just before the other. If we look at the program that we've written today, We've got an encoder value and we're going to start at zero. If we turn one direction it will increase and if we turn the other direction it will decrease. So how have we made this work? If we look at our program, and this time it's all contained within the one file, there's a couple of macros initially which you've probably seen before. We also keep a note here of what the CLK and DT pin numbers are, and this is the binary values of each pin being used. We start the program in the usual way and set up some background text. And the first bit of our loop simply checks whether we've pressed the escape key. We then go on to check the encoder. This section here reads the readings from the I.O. port. We then store the value of the clock pin and the DT pin. We also keep the state machine status and it will be one of seven different states. The default is zero, and that is that the rotary encoder is not turning. Here we check which state we're in, and jump to a different routine depending on that state. If you're used to other languages, this is similar to something like a switch statement. So in state zero, we check whether each of the pins has changed from a low state, and if so, do something about it. We either move on to state 1, or we move on to state 4. If we move to state 1, we've checked whether one pin has gone low, and then start to check if the next pin's gone low. So really what we're doing here is checking for a direction. Are we rotating left, or are we rotating right? And if we've completed one stage of a left or right loop, then we'll be in either state 3 or we'll be in state 6. Whenever we finish at state 3 or 6, 
we then update the value of the encoder on screen, either by increasing it by one or decreasing it by one. And we simply print the current value onto the screen at a tab position of 15.3. So, maybe you can find a way to include a Rotio encoder in some of your projects. As you can see, it's fairly simple to include.